It's here! Apple finally announced the long-anticipated new version of the iPhone SE today. This is Allison from Computers.Mom with a quick take on the new phone to help you decide if it's right for you. You can use Apple's website to compare the new phone to other models. So I'm going to show you three phones side by side. The new iPhone SE, the iPhone 8, which it replaces, and the iPhone 11, which is one of the newer, larger phones, not the latest generation. First thing to notice is the size. The new iPhone SE is exactly the same size as the older iPhone 8, both the overall size and the size of the screen. They list it as 4.7 inches, but remember that that's the diagonal screen measurement. It's actually about 5.5 inches long by about 2 and 2 thirds inches wide. So it's smaller in your hand or your pocket, lighter to carry around, which a lot of people prefer. But the trade-off, as you can clearly see when you compare it to the iPhone 11, which is not even the biggest model, is that you can't see as much on the screen at once. Also, the difference in the screen area is even greater than the difference in the overall size because instead of the notch of the newer phones, the SE has the older style home button. Many people like the home button, but again, the trade-off is you lose some screen area and there's no face ID. Comes in three colors, nothing particularly new or exciting about that, just choose what you prefer. After the size, the next big point of difference is the price. The new SE starts at $399 for the base model, or $300 less than the iPhone 11. For an iPhone, that's practically cheap. You can double the storage to 128GB from the base of 64GB for an extra $50, or quadruple it for $150, although I'm not sure who needs that much storage in their phone. And of course, they have payment plans and so on. So what do you give up for the lower price? Well, cameras. There's only one camera each, front and rear, not the very fancy multiple cameras of the top of the line iPhones, and the resolution and video capture are not Apple's best, but they're more than adequate for most people. Water resistance is good, but again, not Apple's best. It'll probably still survive an accidental dunking. And what you do not sacrifice is power. The processor, that's the brain of the phone, is the same latest generation processor as Apple's most expensive phones. Battery life, meh, this is about the same nonsense, is not very helpful, but the main point here is that your battery life won't be as long as it is in a bigger phone because the battery is smaller. You do get wireless charging, of course, but there's no headphone jack, like all the recent iPhones, just a lightning port. So overall, if you want a smaller, less expensive, not quite state-of-the-art, but still powerful iPhone that has a home button but no face ID, this is a good choice. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments and questions below. Click like if you found this helpful, and don't forget to subscribe for more Computers.Mom videos.